So good morning, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here today. And uh, uh, as someone said yesterday, uh, we scientists are used to, s to give seminars and things, but we're not necessarily into this uh, bigger picture, which I really enjoyed about uh, hearing about yesterday. And um, mm -hmm. okay, so just a just, uh, few things recalling from yesterday, apart from the the fact that we need institution behind, and this is very important. I think it's also important that we uh, never take things for granted. So nothing is uh, there forever. So we always have to fight, I think. And I, I want to tell you a very short story that happened to my nephew, Adriano, uh, about early education. So he was in primary school, and uh, the teacher said, well, now you write down what your mom is doing for Christmas which cookies she's preparing. Except that uh, my nephew was, is the son of my sister, who was a doctor, who spent nights at the hospital, so no cookies for her. Uh, the cookies were from the father, who is a professor at high school. And so Adriano stayed there and sat and did nothing. And the, professor, the teacher went to him and said, Adriano, what's wrong with you? Why don't you write anything? He was almost in tears. I can't, my mom doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> she walks at night, ooh. <laughs> so this is to say, and, 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 and of, of course the teacher said, don't worry, write whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So this is what we heard yesterday, insidious things. It was uh, totally unconscious on behalf of the professor. She didn't mean that the mother has to do that, but this is what happened. So he didn't write anything because Mariolina, my sister, didn't do anything. So. That's it. And also, it means that it takes two to tango. So we, um, we have also to educate our spouses and sons and daughters, because this is life. I mean, if uh, my sister was able to have to compose with this, that it means that he, her husband uh, agreed on that. So, and, and it always takes two to tango, I think. And someone said that we have to sacrifice time I'm not sure. When I went to school and uh, I was never, you know, I didn't pick up my daughter at school, etc., like all the other mothers who didn't work. I think it's a matter of quality time. It's not quantitative, a quality time. Quality time. Having said that, said, said that, let's look at the bright side. I think really uh, we cannot complain compared to what uh, our mothers experienced. We are in a much better shape. And let's talk about science now. So this is uh, uh, where things started with uh, those who, knew, who know Veronica Rodriguez. We started the collaboration long ago, and we had the CEFI program together. Unfortunately, Veronica passed, and uh, Vijay Raghavan took over, agreed to take over. And so the uh, collaboration started in Bombay, and then it, in fact, was with Bangalore, with the NCBS. And um, we... Um, we now continue with the second CEFI per grant with a junior investigator, you may notice, she's a female, Tina Mukherjee, an excellent scientist at the NCBS. And uh, this is uh, one of the reasons that motivated me to continue on this, because we had a long uh, experience with students and postdocs, students of all kinds, PhD, rotation, master's students from all places in India. And so we decided with Gaiti, Professor Gaiti Hassan in Bangalore, to establish a Laboratoire International Associé, which we started in 2019. And this Laboratoire International Associé also includes young investigators from the French side and from the um, Indian side, female investigators. Now, what we would like uh, to do is to, um, I, I would like to present a bit what we've been doing, part of what we've been doing in, in Strasbourg. Uh, of course, it's very pretentious to understand what is building the brain, but it's suffice to say that the nervous system is made of majorly of two types of cells, neurons and glia, and the neurons are the ones that transmit the electrical and chemical signal, and the glia cells are some kind of the maid of the nervous system. They do whatever the neurons don't do. So basically they help the neurons to develop, help the neurons to survive, help the neurons to function. And so they are extremely complex uh, cells that accomplish a number of tasks. Uh, both these cells come from the neural stem cells. And you may know that there is a big, big 
discussion about Nudelstem cells. The idea is that when you have a disease, you can cure the disease by reactivating in the adult the division of the Nudelstem cells. So it all boils down to understanding how do we get these neural stem cells to produce these different cell types, the neurons and the glial cells. But of course, this is very complicated in uh, a sophisticated um, animal, so, or, or in humans. And uh, just to say that the humans have 10 to 11 uh, neurons and even more glial cells. So we need to establish a simple model system. And that is why I'm gonna defend our system, which is the fly. Uh, the fly is a, a fantastic model for several reasons that I try to list here. So most of the human genes are present in flies, and in fact, 75% of the genes that are associated with disease in humans are present in flies. And of course, this is due to the fact that the body plan is pretty conserved. So we have the head, the thorax, the abdomen, and so forth and so on. Fast cycle, so you can become grandparent in three weeks, which I don't know whether this is what we want, but <laughs> they do it. Uh, they are easy to raise. So basically, the equivalent of the whole population in Paris is, uh, can be, uh, you know, raised in few square meters. They only have eight chromosomes. This is the C. elegans, the worm. Uh, this is a fish, mice, and humans. You can see how easy it is to work on flies. The genome is annotated and sequenced. We heard about the genome yesterday. A fantastic uh, genetic approach. Very minor ethical considerations, which is not negligible. And a wide array of publicly available tools. And of course, last but not least, budget considerations. So this is a life cycle. In 10 days, you go from an egg to the adult, and we go from the egg to the larvae. We have molds, and then we have a time when the worm transforms into the adult. You may notice some kind of difference between the two, and in reality, what really matters, despite you know, the tremendous difference here, is that they reproduce and they don't reproduce. This is an, an important time when you have uh, all the transformation of the larva tissue into the adult tissue that is called metamorphosis. So this is a, um, an immunolabeling to show an embryonic nervous system of the fly that is being labeled in the neuronal marker in red and the glial marker in green. This is the, what we call the ventral cord, which is equivalent of our spinal cord. And here we have the peripheral nerves which, as you see, are all lined by glial cells. And we were very fortunate to identify the only transcription factor, the only protein that is necessary to produce the glial cells. Um, in flies, like invertebrates, these cells, the glia and the neuron, come from neural stem cell, like, and this is due to asymmetric division. So these cells divide asymmetrically to produce this subpopulation. And it's very important to see that in a wild type embryo, this is the array of glial nuclei. If we remove one and the single protein, most of the glial cells are gone, and they are gone because they are transformed into neurons. So when we say loss, it means a loss of function, so no protein, and the protein is called glycogen for glial cell missing or glial cell deficient. Even more importantly, when we express this protein throughout the neurogenic region, we get all these cells becoming glia at the expense of neurons. So we have what we heard about yesterday, a molecular switch. So one single transcription factor can do it. And so uh, this is taking uh, a lot of energy to us to understand how is this happening, what is implied in terms of chromatin, uh, but I will not get into that for the sake of simplicity. This is just to say that we are very interested in understanding how do we go from multipotent cells to differentiated cells and what chromatin, so that is the epigenetic signature, is important in that. Once the cells differentiate, they have to move. Most of our cells in our brain and in the rest of our body do not differentiate at the place where they work. They have to move to the final destination and to accomplish their duty. And this is a tremendous uh, effort in the scientific community to understand the ba basis of collective cell migration. Why is that? Uh, because in a normal brain, we have lots of migration, but if migration doesn't take place, we end up with a number of disease including mental retardation, epilepsy, etc. So we really need to understand how these cells move. 
and in general, they move together. So again, um, this is a matter of understanding the basis of very complicated pa pathway. And the second reason to study this pathway is, uh, as you know, this is a normal human being, uh, but in some cases there are mutations in which we start having proliferation of the cells, abnormal proliferation, and this is causing tumors. Now, as long as the tumors stay there, it's relatively okay. But when they start moving, spreading, they proliferate and move to different places. This is when we have metastasis and cancer. This is a tremendous uh, disease. And of course, this is due to abnormal behavior. So collective migration is important during development, but it also takes place in disease. How do we go for that? Now, we, we can't open the brain of human beings for good reasons, but even if we want to understand collective migration in simple uh, organism, it's not that easy. So we really have uh, to uh, take a, what I, I call a wire attitude. <laughs> so we want to see how things happen in real time. Because when we call uh, and process collective migration, we forget that there are many steps in this event. And we, if we want to have therapeutic targets, we need to understand the different steps that are controlling this complex behavior. And this is what we've been doing through the CEFIPRA project. So the reason why I'm showing this movie, it's not only because it's nice, uh, but because it's telling us a lot. So these are uh, starlings, which are uh, migrating as collectives. And they are migrating as collectives for good reasons. Because if they have to reach the final destination, and the final destination is important to reproduce, so it's important for the species and in evolutionary terms for the fitness. Uh, the, if they have to reproduce, they have to reach a final destination, and they do it better if they are together. So this means that there must be a control of directionality, efficiency, they have to migrate at the right speed and at the right time. So this means that, the, the, that there must be a lot of interactions between the different elements of the community. And to look at that, we went on and we looked at a, a specific tissue. Whatever I talk about today, it's, it doesn't matter. It's the simple thing that I want to convey is that we have to see migration as it happens. So we can look at migration of specific cells, glia cells, using a transgenic fluorescent animal for glia. So we open up here the cuticle, and we then uh, put it on a Petri dish, and then we look at the confocal microscope for hours. So very costly experiments. So these are the glia cells here on the, on the wing margin here, the nuclei, and these cells, you will see in the movie, they, they migrate, and this is over um, a time of seven hours. Okay, so these, you will see this chain of cells that are moving, and they're reaching the more proximal glial cells here. This chain is extremely coordinated in movement, and so the question was, if these cells are moving, is it because they have specific signal? Is it because these cells are driving the others? Is there a difference in the collective? Uh, so we could have, for example, pioneers over here and followers over here. So we start in doing more sophisticated movies, higher resolution movies, to image the front of migration, which is here. So these are shorter movies, but the frame interval is much shorter so that we can see the shape of the cells and the dynamics. And the question was, do we have differences in shape? Sure enough, you can see here, the cells at the front send a huge number of processes. And the incredible thing is that they, these processes are sent everywhere. So these cells are sensing the environment. However, if you look into this movie, I'm going to play this again, the only cytoplasmic processes that are really consolidated 
are the ones that are on the substrate. And you cannot see it here, but the substrate is neurons. We've done movies, uh, double color with neurons and glia, but it was too complicated to show today. So basically what we have is a science which are exploring the environment. Then when they find the substrate, they consolidate the position of the cytoplasmic process, and they keep going on that way, and they follow the axon. So you can follow here these cells, and there will be at this point a very long cytoplasmic process which is sent and retracted because it's not on the right direction. Zzz, back. So clearly they are following signals which are coming from the neurons. Fair enough. But are these cells really important here? Do they really matter to the migration? So we designed a way to kill those cells, specifically those cells. So we have a fantastic imaging facility uh, where we could discuss with the people there and they, we asked them how do we kill the cells by confocal laser ablation, which is not obvious because in general, if you have a laser on the confocal, it's not to kill cells. So we have to work it out. And so we could, in fact, uh, kill the cells specifically at the front and I will show you another movie to show that the cells at the front are important to drive the rest of the cells of the chain. So you will see here on the left a control and here on the right where we made the ablation of four specific cells at the front. And you will see that the ones at the right, they are less efficient in moving. Here is the control, here we kill the cells disappearing and these cells, they just stay put. They don't know what to do. So the first cells at the front are really important. Okay. But then the question was then, if these four cells are, are the driving force, why don't they leave the chain? Why don't they move on their own? They are strong enough. They, can, they, they have the motivation to move. Why would they do that? And, but if that were true, then we would, we would never have collective migration on its own. So it means that we have to uh, figure out whether these cells need signals from the rest of the chain to survive. And that makes sense. If you want the collective migration to stay collective, the cells have to communicate. The pioneer drive the followers, but they need the followers to survive. And if that doesn't happen, collective migration will not happen either. So this is a, a, a schematic of what we did. Huge number of uh, ablation experiments. So this is the chain of migration that I was alluding to. These are the glial cells, these are the pioneer cells that this chain normally uh, migrate and reaches the more proximal glial cells. And so we went through a number of experiments and migrated different cells. So we, as I said, we remove these four cells here and migration doesn't happen. But then what we did, we removed the four cells behind the pioneers here. And these cells, they stay put. Again, the glia cells do not leave. You could have imagined that these cells move on, on their own. They don't. They just stay put and wait for the others to slowly reach. And of course, migration is delayed, which means that within a collective, we need the pioneers to trigger my, the movement, but the followers are there to make the pioneers survive. So it's a, it's a true democracy there. So it's not master and slave, pioneers are followers. There is a hierarchy, but the hierarchy also means that they need to interact constantly. So uh, we, we went on and with uh, Tripti, and this is the collaboration that was made possible by the Sefipra with Vijay Raghavan. What we did was to see um, what is driving the timing, the speed, the, the, the definition of, of, of these different parameters? And I will show only one example um, to say uh, what is determining the beginning, the start of migration. Sorry, I cannot make things coordinated here. Okay, so what we did through ways that I won't describe, I, we identified a chemoreceptor, a chemotropic receptor that was expressed here. 
which is responding to a cue that is coming from here. And this uh, chemotropic receptor make it possible to give a kickstart and make the glial cells move, the initiation of movement. Um, we found other molecules of different pathways that affect other steps like speed. So the complex, the, the, this collective migration is extremely complex in nature. And if you compare these two, the control and the situation in which we have a forced expression of the chemoreceptor, chemotropic receptor, uh, of course, this uh, uh, forced expression is specifically in glial cells, specifically at that time, of course. We just elevate the, uh, the amount. We will see that these cells that have higher level of chemotropic receptor will move, will start moving in earlier. And we will they will make contact with the proximal glial cells, which are here and here, earlier than in the control. So if we play the movie together, and the contact, Establishment is uh, indicated by an arrow. Here they are, uh, here it's gonna, yeah. So basically this is dissecting the complex process of migration. What does this mean is that we can, in flies, uh, look at uh, collective migration, uh, which is more, I would say, than single cell migration because the, the, the whole cytoskeleton of the cell is important, of course, but this connection between cells is something that doesn't exist in single cell migration. So this is something that we have to take into account whenever we look at uh, collective migration processes uh, taking place in the development of the brain, in metastasic, metastasic processes, etc. And that different pathways affect specific migratory properties, speed, timing, etc. And finally, the different cells in the collective are specific tasks. Now, while we were doing all these studies on glial cells and the nervous system, uh, it didn't escape our attention the fact that the nervous system um, is certainly in an isolated tissue, but is also, while it is developing, in contact with immune cells. And we all know the importance of the immune cells in the development uh, of the nervous system, as well as in the function of the nervous system. So what we have decided to do, and this is uh, part of our project uh, with, with Tina Mukherjee and with Gaeti Hassan, is to look at the impact of the immune system onto the nervous system. Just a short movie. So this is um, a triple living of, again, a ventral cord. As I said, this is the equivalent of the spinal cord. In blue, we have the neurons. In green, we have the glial cells. And here in red, we have the blood cells. Now, just short parenthesis. In, in flies, we have blood cells. And these are important for the cellular response. These are the equivalent of our macrophages. So cells that are going to in, in patrol the organism and eat up all pathogens. There is no memory, no antibody production, no nothing. So there is only the myeloid lineage. Nevertheless, uh, there is a huge conservation in the immune pathway, pathways in evolution between flies and vertebrates. And this is something that we are also going to explore through uh, this uh, new collaboration. So the idea is now that we know, oh, this is the, this is a rotation, a 3D reconstruction and the rotation of the nervous system. So you can see the arrangement. These cells are really in close contact while the nervous system is developing with the neurons and the glial cells. So it could be that these cells are sending uh, signals to make the nervous system survive. And we know that during development of the nervous system, like in our body, by the way, there is a lot of death. Not all the cells that are born in the nervous system survive. Physiologically, we have a lot of death. So it could be that these cells here are going to be there to eat up the debris of the dying cells. And if that doesn't happen, it is very likely that the rest of neurogenesis will be impaired. And as a consequence, you will have 
effective nervous system development. So this is uh, going to take a lot of uh, energy in the sense that we have, uh, this is a uh, work in progress through the LIA, uh, through the CEFIPRA. And I think the reason why we want to uh, invest in this is that more and more in our societies, uh, we see the impact of the immune system in diseases, in human diseases. So this could be a simply alimentary <laughs> attitude to take into account disease. But in reality, for me, it's also very satisfactory because uh, the transcription factor that I was alluding before to, which is necessary for the differentiation of BIA, we have recently shown that it is also necessary for the differentiation and for the inflammatory reaction provided by the macrophages in flies. So from there, from this initial finding, we are now starting a new branch saying, okay, if this transcription factor is necessary for macrophages in flies, is it also necessary for macrophages in mice? And is it necessary to counteract the inflammatory response? So we are starting a collaboration with the ICM where they have a fantastic platform to look at multiple sclerosis. For example, our collaborator is Brahim Naitu Mesma. So he is designing a number, he has a model for multiple sclerosis in mice. And we are playing with this transcription factor for which we are produced the mice. The, uh, the conditional knockout mice, and we want to look at the role of this transcription factor in the immunity. The reason why we are so interested is that I started by saying that it is extremely conserved, all the pathways from flies to uh, human beings, except for the glia cells. <laughs> so all the glia genes, all the, all the neuronal genes are there in flies and in mice. And they do the same thing. Glia, not at all. And that was a real puzzle to us. Why the glial cells are not conserved? And my teleological explanation is the fact that um, for us, the most important function of glia is the myelin. Myelin is a sheet that allows electrical insulation so that our sciatic nerve, which is more than one meter long in general, uh, can work. If you don't have an electrical insulation, by no means our sciatic nerve will work. And this electrical insulation is coming from the glial sheath, the myelin sheath. Now, flies are small. <laughs> they don't need this myelin sheath. That's why it is very likely, and this is not me, it's, it's what is floating in the air, is that in fact, neurons are there because they all do the same things throughout evolution. But glia cells don't do the same thing throughout evolution. They do whatever is required in that organism. So small animals, they don't require myelin. Larger animals require myelin. Our glia cells are supposed to be also stem cells in the adult. Flies, they don't have adult proliferation. They don't have a stem cell like the glia cell. So it's very different. And this is now, again, per perhaps explaining why the function of the transcription factor in the glia production was not conserved in evolution, but we now start to find that this transcription factor is expressed in the immune system in mice. So I think it is important uh, to keep in mind evolution because this is telling us a lot, but it is also important to step back and see what our cells doing and why in the different um, organisms. So having said that, I'd like to, uh, of course, acknowledge uh, the importance for us of the LIA, of the CEFIPRA, and I would take a chance today to say that we have, uh, we are really spoiled by the fact that we have CEFIPRA um, because they have been extremely supportive. I don't know or other countries doing the same, so I think um, we deserve, uh, um, the Indian community deserves a different, a special treatment. And, and so I think we should push for having an international program uh, from our institution through the ANR 
to have an international ENA program with India. And I think this uh, is going to be important because ENA is the only tool we have in France, institutional tool, to promote science. If you don't work on AIDS, if you don't work on real disease, there is no way we can be funded, we Drosophilus can be funded. Uh, but if we have an ENA tool, international tool with India, this will make a real difference. LIA is important, CEFIPA is even more important, but ENA, these are kickstart, the LIA. But if we really want to do things together, we need the tools to, do, to go for it. And having said that, I need to acknowledge the people who really did the job while I was uh, traveling. Uh, so Pierre, he's a um, chargé de recherche and he's been behind most of the project. Um, Rosie has been working on epigenetics, a fantastic project that we have started in the lab, but I didn't have time to talk today. Um, then we have uh, Yoshi, a postdoc who left and uh, he started all the mouse work, which has been taken over by Alexia Pavlidakis, a student that reached uh, the laboratory this year. Uh, then we have uh, Archit Bagul, who has been hired through an IDEX initiative, and an another PhD student. Shazva uh, Sarbania, who's going to uh, join us, another PhD student, through the new CEFI program with Tina Mukherjee. And uh, these are three excellent uh, research assistants, Claude Laporte, Céline Diebold, uh, Oli Schmidt. Ekin was a um, Turkish student who came as a, one of the rotations. And of course, all this was really possible through uh, the um, IGBMC facilities and the whole flight community that generously gave us a lot of tools and advice. Of course, I would like to acknowledge our collaborators. First, Veronica, with whom everything started, I have to say. Uh, Vijay Ragavan, who uh, accepted to take over. Tina Mukherjee, with whom we started the CEFIPRA, and with whom I think we organized the next macrophage meeting, which we hope will be held in Bangalore. Gaiti Hassan, with whom we have started this uh, um, work on the um, immune system and the role of the immune system in controlling neurogenesis, and all these other people through other collaboration on other topics that I didn't uh, have time to allude to, except for Brahim, of course, that was involved in the um, model for multiple sclerosis. Now, of course, we, we can't finish without acknowledging our funding bodies, and in particular, CEFIPRA and the Ministry, and of course, you for your attention. Hi, Angela. Thank you very much. I really enjoy your talk. And uh, I think that the migration it looks a bit similar of what we see in chemiotaxis in bacteria. So that's very interesting. I had a, a naive question. You, you said that the pioneer cells at the, uh, at the, at the, the, the tip, are, are they differentiating differently from the uh, followers? Or do they have a specific program? Or you can, re you know, if you move them at the back, uh, the, the one which become, you know, now at the front differentiate to become pioneer. I don't know if, if, if you know more about that. So the short answer is that I don't think uh, that, I don't think that these are different. Uh, of course, this is through negative results, so you can never exclude. Mm. So mm. We, we, we run a lot of screens to look for genes that are specifically expressed there, and we mm. found none. Uh -huh. I think the simplest explanation is that the, the cells that are at the front uh, they are there, the, before they start moving, they stay put for long time. I mean, long time in flies means mm. minutes, uh, <laughs> hours. Eh? So uh, they stay there and they read what is available. Mm -hmm. And we know that there are chemotropic signals mm. sent. So I think they are there and they capture these signals. So they sense, it's not like in genetics expression, in transcription. And it's, the fact is that when we kill them, we kill them mm. late. Mm so that the other behind will never catch up because they didn't have the time mm. to read was there, I what see. was there. Uh -huh. Okay, I see. And uh, just one last question. And, 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 and also one thing that is uh, has to keep in mind is that when you once you read 
a sinner, it doesn't mean that you change your transcriptional program. It could yeah. be kinases and phosphatases. Yeah, that's why it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably added post translation in the end. And one other question, maybe you didn't investigate it yet, but you said that the macrophages could be involved in the neuron glia organization. Uh, did you try to deplete the macro? I mean, I call them macrophages, but you said they're not like macrophage. Did you try to deplete it to Safety see if this? Uh, Safety <laughs> price doing it. <laughs> no, we do it's, doing it's that. in the future. You're going to. Uh, we're doing that exactly. Yeah, so we are yeah. blading cells by yeah. using uh, genetic tools like yeah. toxins yeah. or death genes uh -huh. or uh, getting mutation in which we have fewer uh, hemocytes differentiating. And this is what we're seeing. We do see alteration of Deserve stem it. cell proliferation, yeah. exactly. But this is extremely preliminary. Yeah. Thanks. Very nice. Thank you. Thanks, Angela, for this talk. I have uh, one scientific question and, and, and one general comment. The scientific question is to pursue the, 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 the previous one on the uh, collective migration at the uh, leading edge uh, cells. You say that the chemotactic receptor is really important for this response. The question is, what is the chemotactic substance which kind of cells are producing and secreting this substance? And uh, do you think that macrophages or the immune cells could be responsible for the secretion of this kind of uh, substances? And the comment I have is on what you say at the end and uh, uh, when you say that the INS should uh, develop more uh, program with, with India, I I think with India, we are lucky enough to have the CEFIPRA, which is an organism that collects money from India and uh, from France, because for INR, the, the, the problem is that in India, there is also several agencies. So you have, you have to choose. So the best would be maybe to convince the French authorities to give more money into CEFIPRA. <laughs> I think in reality, the only institutional uh, tool that we have in France is the ANR. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I take the point, and I'm absolutely glad that we were able to get not one, but two CEFIPRA. But uh, as you know, uh, we, we can get funding to some extent. But if we want to run omics, we can't. We can't. We really cannot. It's not realistic. And we need, for example, see if we want to see what is wrong, what and this is what we are doing anyway. Uh, if we want to see what is the impact of the hemocytes on nervous system development, what we really have to do is to get uh, mutant hemocytes and characterize the transcriptional landscape and see whether they are not secreting the proper chemokines or whether they are secreting toxic, the mutant ones. You know, we, we, I, I know, fly don't cost, but all the rest cost. <laughs> So, uh, so the, the CEFIPRA is absolutely fundamental. That was, without that trigger, we would not have been able to start. However, if we want to move on, I mean, m m my frustration, I have organized a macrophage meeting last week in Vienna. And you see, the French community is not less smart, but we don't, we are, we, we're not playing in the same court <laughs> as the Germans. A quick, uh, quick explanation about the financial. I'm sure Mukesh also has many points to say about it. But very quickly, there are many opportunities. A CEFIPRA is one of the best tools. There is no doubt about it. Every scientist sitting here knows the value of CEFIPRA. But CEFIPRA cannot keep on probably funding the same teams for a long, long time. You see, that's one problem. I mean, these are small pr practical issues I'm telling about. And then ANR has, in the past, has targeted programs also with India, which was very attractive, but unfortunately not many and not repetitive. And these were just sporadic on and off uh, targeted calls. Not good enough. We can do more. This is a very good point. Let's not also forget we should probably push, if I may use that word, 
INSERM or CNRS in addition to the LIAs, and there are many other organizations. ANR is one of the best examples. Yes, uh, bottom line is, yes, we need to increase more, more funding because in France, we have been just discussing with Virginia a few minutes ago, it's so difficult to get the students. Having a student or a postdoc in a lab is an, I mean, a nightmare in the sense uh, raising the money for that is extremely hard. And Sefipra has been a boon for all of us, for those people who are working in France. But then we need to do much more than this, much more than this. India is immense, huge country, a lot of potential. So, so Katrin, if you have other, um, yeah. I'm open to any other. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just wanted to support saying that, for example, at least for physics, I really think CNRS needs to be tapped more. I mean, I have, like you, I have an ELIA, and ELIA is just facilitator. Mobility. It's a mobility, and we need much more than that if we want to really play at the play for high stakes at the high table in the Premier League. Yeah. So I, I support you completely, except being physicist. I'm saying it's the CNRS that I would like to tap much more than the ANR. So uh, because I sit in different positions, I also chair international relations at my institution. And I know that there is a, a very, very serious intent from CEA, from ANR, because when they're heads of delegations who are the equivalent of, uh, I would say, provost or vice provost, I forget the delegation head, they all mentioned that they want to partner. So I think additional agencies supporting the funding and the good work which is done by Sefipra, I, if there's 10 ways of saying it, I will say it all 10 ways. And we, I will do the same back home in India. And I don't think there's a problem in having a Sefipra mode and an ANR mode and a CEA mode. There are many institutions and agencies. You have University Grants Commission. For example, the Indo-Israel program started with DBT and ISF, but now it is MHRD and ISF. It doesn't matter that there are multiple agencies. People want success stories, and Sefibra gives them a platform to build success stories. Nobody else would give such a beautiful platform. Since I've been in this kind of uh, management, I know we have not multiplied the number of organizations we are giving money. There's already too many in France. That start from 1946. All the ministers want to have their own research organism. So what it is specific to CEFIPRA is the relationship between India and France. That we have to encourage that. Mm -hmm. and, but don't forget that the money for France is coming from the Minister of Foreign Office, which is not existing in your logos there. <laughs> You know, enseignement supérieur de la recherche. You know, that is a, a small difference, but that is a great yeah, difference yeah. because uh, it's a break to put more money in this CFIPRA program. It's coming from the foreign office because it's not the Indian who want to slow down the process. It's the French. Yeah. So we have to encourage CNRS and INSERM, which are the two uh, leaders who are behind you at University of Strasbourg, we have not to forget also, uh, to, to really push in that direction a specific program, but not to try to have another tool where the money will be more segmented, that the amount of money will be diminished, and each time there is losses when you are cutting and cutting and cutting. Okay. Provide the money okay. there. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Angela, uh, for acknowledging Sefipra several times. In fact, I am aware of your project, and in fact, your project was graded excellent uh, almost two years ago. And out of these six logos which are here, I think uh, 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 two logos, uh, CNRS and ANR, they have a bilateral program with Department of Science and Technology and where the health sciences is very much covered. And your area can definitely be covered. But only thing is that we need to sensitize ANR and CNRS for this particular area to include in their call for proposal. I'm also aware that INSERM also has a bilateral program with ICMR, that's Indian Council of Medical Research, long back, signed in 1989 and renewed in March 2018, right? So uh, 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 to answer uh, uh, my friend Alan Fontaines, uh, if she has acknowledged Sifibra, means she's acknowledging both 
Ministry of Foreign Affairs as well as the Department of Science and Technology because the money which comes to Sivipra is from both sides. So thank you very much. A very quick last comment. I just uh, completely agree that some more money needs to be pumped into Sefipra, like the budget. Now we are forced to limit the budget for every project. There is an upper limit, which is not always a healthy signature. And we know as a scientific council member, we really didn't agree to it, but the budget is the main limiting factor. So I think with the spirit of the Sefipra, it's actually very much needed from the French side if we agree to put in more budget. This has been discussed, but I'm glad now it's been discussed in a bigger forum. So I, if I want to uh, summarize that. Time, I, time is running, uh, Usha, Usha, very quickly. Sefi from model itself is very good, but Angela is talking about bigger funding. So there are two different points. One is sustaining the Sefi Pra model, and we need okay. to do that. And the other one is bigger funding to do actually bigger research projects. I think every, both of them are valuable. I propose to thanks again, uh, Angela, for the talk.